We're back. Thank you guys for joining us again. We are at episode number five, and uh, Charlie and I are both here to just share with you some of the things that are coming up for the summer. And um, really, I I think your stories around what tourism is like in Alaska and how we kind of incorporate in all of that is something that is very interesting. It's fast and furious. So uh, summer season is upon us. It's May now, and uh, we have cruise ship season starting to come up. So huge for us. Uh, cruise ships come out of Whittier and Seward, and where you know Anchorage is kind of the hub of that whole entire tourism. So uh, either they're coming in this way or they're going out this way. So we get them either way. So it's nice. So tourism is massive for the industry. I mean, all of our business partners and partners that we work with in tourism, um, this is their shot in the arm during the season. You know, we have a uh, about a five month season. We have May, June, July, August, September. Uh, it starts tapering down in September and starts working up in May. So it's a, it's, it's amazing. That's uh, really one of our biggest industries in the state of Alaska, besides oil and yeah. is tourism and fishing. So all, all good things. We get work from all three of them. So it's it's even a bonus bonus. Yes, that is the bonus because we get work from the canneries. We get work from the, the airlines who have an influx in visitors. And um, and we get work from just people coming to visit and, and the oil to be industry. toured around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things that I love about the tourism season is we all get busy and then we're, we like have to bring, bring it basically. And it's like seeing the partners that we have really just like grown up with in this industry, how they come together in these busy times. It's just, it's amazing. And, you know, one of the, um, partners that I think of is Jason over at Pepperjeans. Yeah, Jason's great. So he, he um, just, we need a hundred sandwich orders and like just how he just stays calm and we've got you. And so he's got a good team. So uh, Jason from Peppuccini's is one of our partners on the vendor side and basically uh, <coughs> supplies uh, meals for our divert uh, passengers and then also our tourism passengers. So uh, anything from our 56 passenger motor coaches to set up lunches and meals or special dietary issues or anything else like that. We can give Jason an order and pick it up the day before or day of and be able to get it out to our team members to distribute out to our clients. And that's a huge partnership because uh, when you have these people that are driving six or seven hours in, in different destinations, uh, you know, they get hungry and they want to have some food and they want to have some good quality food. So it's nice that they make it. And, and then you look at our other partners like Main Event. Main Event does the same thing for us, breakfast burritos, box lunches, all that other stuff. So it's great to have several different ones because – no matter how much we call these guys, they all get booked up pretty well and do catering and things like that. So it's always great to have different vendors that we can work with. And they're all ones that could call at 10 o'clock at night and tell them that we need something for tomorrow morning and they can make it happen. They'll make it happen. You know, and most of the time they make it happen and we absolutely reciprocate that mindset. And um, I know that they appreciate that if they needed us in the middle of the night because something happened that they could call us and just absolutely, we'll do everything we can to, to take care of that. But you know, his partnership in particular goes far beyond just handling diverts. This is also a VIP offering that some of our de destination management companies utilize as like specialty salads and making sure that that perfect tour is happening. Like he's touching our VIP clients, he's touching our, our ad hoc uh, surprise large group clients. Like it's it's amazing how much uh, these food vendors just, they bring it for us yeah. in polishing up that, that service that we're providing. What's well, part of the services that we offer on our menu too. So when you have a group of four to six or two or one, it, it doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's all about the customer experience on that. Yeah. And so I think the takeaway on this is that part of running a successful business model is you have to establish these relationships with people who are going to be there for you when you really need them. And you have to be that person for them when they really need you. And uh, I just feel like we've really forged some alliances within the tourism industry as a result of that. Same with our hotels, same with every, all the different venues that we use. I mean, it's a, it, it's all a partnership. It, we all need each other to make it work. Uh, so it works out well. You know, um, you mentioned the hotels, like that is something when you're coming to visit in Anchorage in the summertime, the hotels are, they're booked, they're absolutely booked. 
Yeah, they start off about 92% booked out for the summer and the peak of the summer. So it's tough. It's tough to get rooms. And it's good to know the partners at the hotels that we can uh, lean on them when we have uh, different circumstances that happen, that we have diversion flights or we have some people are stuck here or something happens and there's an emergency that we can call those people and maybe get some of the room blocks dropped and be able to get some of our customers taken care of or some of our clients' customers, uh, even all the way down to the airlines. I mean, I know that we've had a lot of problems uh, with the airlines increased in the summertime, but the hotels can't. So we've gone out and helped them uh, recruit some uh, hotels to help them take that extra load factor for them. So it's nice to be able to call the GM or one of the other people there and just talk to them and tell them what the problem is and then set our other partners up, which are our airlines and have them there because, you know, a lot of those guys are not here in town or in the state or in the country and they're working out of a, uh, at a remote location. So they depend on us for, us helping them also. And then the ground handlers too. I mean, how many times have we worked all the ground handlers to have people come up and uh, replace engine motors and things like that? And they need help with hotels and transportation and food. And we, we provide that also. You know, and really, I think the message that we're trying to kind of bring across to all of you is that you're not on an island when you're a business owner. And, and if you are on an island, there's a better way we are kind of on an island. We're, we're all by ourselves in the United States, but here, but you know, we make it work. And, and I think everybody, I shouldn't say everybody. I think a lot of people have the same mindset that we have to work together to be able to accomplish the goals that we're looking for. If we all kind of just in our lane and didn't help anybody, I mean, it would be pretty devastating. I don't think our businesses have grown to the, the size they have now. Well, and that's the point I'm making is it's, it's like there's these pockets of communities everywhere. And, and really it's this mindset of, Am I going to be part of this like collaboration and this like partnership attitude? Or am I just going to like stay in this little corner and I'm not going to talk to you and I'm not going to, I'm not going to get in your business and try to help you. It's, it's really like, that's been our mantra is the opposite of that. Like we get involved, we get dirty, we, um, we see what can we do. Uh, we help and we meet people who have that same mindset and it ends up just being this beautiful relationship of growth and opportunity. And um, it's, it's like fulfilling to be a part of. Well, I mean, the partnerships really make it easier for us to do our job too. And for them also, I mean, they know they can call us at a moment's time and know that they need to get people transported to move or do something like that. And we'll make it happen. So we're very hands-on in that way. So if they go through our dispatchers or whatever else, most of those people call me directly on their cell phones and Mm -hmm. let me know what's going on. Then we can help them direct the way that it needs to be taken care of. You know, and I think that being part of the tourism community in the summertime is um, also one of the funnest things because uh, our team members get to see so much of the landscape with all of the different clientele that we have and all of the different opportunities that are presented to us. And sometimes they get to participate in it too because the people in the group want our drivers or our chauffeurs or some of the other people to go with them to lunch or be part of it. Because when you spend five or seven days with some of these people, you become a, a like your little Alaska family. And so it's really nice to be able to know that they feel comfortable with our people to be around their kids or their their parents or whatever else it might be that they have that comfortability with them. And our drivers still sometimes uh, get cards from people that tell them they came up to Alaska or a picture will come up or a Facebook posting or something like that. Yeah. And they'll comment on it. So it's, it's nice. Uh, plus the drivers, you know, they get to see some most beautiful things. And you know what? I think just like anywhere else, you live in Hawaii or you live where else and you take for granted the oceans, you take for granted how beautiful Hawaii is, but Alaska People come up here, it's their bucket list. Yeah, it's so majestic. You're looking down these rolling mountains of greenery and you have glaciers in every corner of the the spaces and then the inlets in and out. And, you know, you have Girdwood and you have all these special places that you go through. We're only one of the biggest ones that has a man-made tunnel to get over to another city in Whittier. Yeah, the Whittier Tunnel. So, I mean, all these different great things we have. And sometimes we don't realize it until we see it through their eyes. We're like, Oh, look at that. What is that? And you're looking over there and you're like, Oh, that's a beautiful mountain. I I've always noticed it, but I never noticed that crease in it. You know, you just, because it's just our scenery every day. So it's really neat to see it through the eyes of our customers. And when they're up here and they ask us things about it and they get to go see the Creek and you walk down there with them and you see some different things you haven't seen before. So oh, it's a, like a little mini vacation for our people too. And you know what I'm thinking about uh, as many times as we take a corridor ride from like Anchorage to Seward, which is about a three hour trip there and then a three hour trip back. There is really like that one road that is heading uh, south. And so highway. Yeah. And so it's 
there are opportunities that um, we have to like help people along the way too. And you know, it reminds me of. Do you remember that lady that you stopped and helped? Oh, the that car still hit the sen- moose. Yep, yeah. that still sends you like a thank you card every year. Yeah, we were coming back from a. Um, I was coming back from taking some people down to Whittier, and uh, there was a motor vehicle accident with a uh, with a moose. And of course, we're first responders. Some of us also are. I am, and we pulled over to make sure everybody was okay and got them some care and looked at it and basically they needed a ride back to Anchorage because they had just totaled the runner car and uh, one of the kids uh, felt a little bit injury and they were a little bit nervous of it so we actually took them to the hospital and we dropped them off there and we kind of this lady was just really felt out of her place she was very distraught her husband had not been with her on this trip and it was just her and her son and they were going to do this trip and uh, they uh, they just had some misfortune so you know we, we took the time to take them to the hospital drop them off we kept all their gear for them. Uh, we called one of the hotels. Got so them what a car room. were you driving at the time that you stopped for all of this? I was this. one of the Suburbans. I was okay. one, of the, I was one okay. of the company Suburbans, and I was coming back, and we stopped, and we loaded all their gear up, and we did all this stuff. And, uh, you know, she offered to pay, but we just, you know, it was the right thing to do. It was a tourism thing. You know, it's these people come up, and they have a bad experience. How can we turn that bad experience okay. around? So we did. We took them around, and then we picked them up, and then we ended up taking them over to get food, and then we took them over to a hotel place. Then we got them a, a discount on the hotel room uh, during the summertime. It was an off day, and so we were able to get them placed in So the when room. you say we, this was all you doing all of this. Well, I mean, it wasn't, it was there we, wasn't it was no we. You know, Charlie was, like, figuring it all out for them. You know, just calling some of our other vendors and telling them what was going on. And I think, actually, we placed them at the Captain Cook, and I think Rochelle was really helpful in that. And we put them at the Captain Cook, and she got them a room, and then she got some stuff set up to their room because they realized that, you know, something just traumatic happened. And it was the village. It was the village that did it. Everybody kind of came together, and then we got them a ride to, uh, I think they flew out the next day because they were supposed to go on, on a trip down to Seward to go do on a whale-watching trip. And I think this just, it was the tail end it. of the trip, and they were just getting ready to leave, so we just helped them out with it. And even all the day down calling the Avis Rent-A-Car, you know, we, we partnered with Avis and talked to those guys, and after the car was wrecked, we contacted them and let them know that it was totaled up in the top of the mountain and they needed to send a tow truck for it. And, you know, that took it off their register that they weren't going to be able to use that car for the season. So it was it was just a collaboration of everybody working together. So Now, there was another story that involved a big furry dog a big where furry you dog. helped somebody and they had a dog. You were losing me on that one. Uh, maybe it was um, another uh, bus customer that had a dog and um, two people that needed to get to the airport. Oh, you're, I, I don't think there was a dog involved, but you're talking about when one of the other bus companies broke down. Yeah. So we were heading home. I was actually going home and I was in my POV, my own private owned vehicle going into our house. And <clears throat> I noticed one of the other bus companies was pulled over that we partner with and do some stuff with. Mm-hmm. And uh, I happened to call him and just say, Hey, you know, I noticed the back of your motor coach is all black. Is everything okay? And he's like, Oh, Charlie He's like, you know, somehow that, oil came out something. the cap or something happened and then we, we the bus is shut down but we have two people immediately need to get to the airport because they've been gone for weeks and they're flying out of the country and this is the only flight they're going to get it's going to really screw things up and I, I was like well how how long until that they, they leave and they said it's leaving an hour and 15 minutes I'm like are you kidding me it's 30 minutes to the airport from here and so I whipped a u-turn they called the driver of the bus. They had their stuff out. And these people, I don't think, had showered in like seven days. They were coming from a backpacking and in country. And close I'm in, in close proximity. And my pickup truck, it was our, our Toyota. I think it was our full-size Toyota Tundra truck. And they threw all their gear in the back. And we were able to call Delta Airlines. They were flying on Delta. I remember that. And I remember calling the, the Delta manager and calling the all those people and just telling them the situation to happen, if we can delay the plane. And yeah. there was a lot of conversations back and forth as we were driving at a safe speed to the airport and uh, they actually had some people from Delta representatives that met us right at the front door. They got them scanned immediately, took them right through the TSA line. And wow. I think it held up the plane maybe three or four minutes at the most, but you know, and they were already supposed to be pre-boarded, but they understand the severity of it because that plane wasn't going to take off for another 48 hours or 72 hours to get that person to catch their connecting nice. flights to Germany. I think it was or something like that. So again, the partnership of just calling and making those phone calls and having yeah. something happen and no difference than, you know, we've been in places too that we have called and something has been left behind. And we were able to call one of our other partners, the same bus company. We were able to call them in Seward and have them pick a couple of people up for us mm-hmm. that got misplaced or didn't get on. And they were able to bring them back and catch up with the tour and the group there. So it really does happen. I remember we had a, um, we had a, uh, a big accident on the highway. We were trying to get a bunch of people to the boat and they were holding the boat for it. And they had some plane delays and 
we actually drove our motor coach out onto the tarmac and picked up all of, like I, there was like a hundred customers who were totally on this plane. Plus the acts were on there. Plus everybody else. And I remember uh, one of our bus partners calling us up and said, "Hey, we got a comedian that's on the scene. Can you throw him on there too?" And we did. And then these other two people were going to sewer. The funny part of that whole thing, they were going to sewer too. So they're like, "If you're going to sewer and you're on this bus, raise your hand." So like these two people at the end raised their hand. And we we didn't question it. We threw him on the bus and took him down there. And I remember we that. We take him down to the cruise ship, and they're like. Oh, no, we go into the Winsong Lodge, and uh, uh, there was this Asian couple, and they were very sweet and very nice. And I said, the Winsong, well, you're supposed to catch a cruise ship. She goes, no, and you said we're going to Seward. We didn't have a ride. So they just raised their hand, and they got hijacked on the, on the bus and went with us. And Got a free ride to Seward. They got a free ride to Seward. So it was funny. My driver's like, what do we do? Do we just leave them? I'm like, no, we do the customer's thing. We take them up to the hotel and drop them off and do that stuff. And they were so appreciative because they were trying to figure out how they were going to get the right, Seward, and right. all this stuff just aligned in their way. And so it was it was funny in, in the long run that we laughed about it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the, the partnerships in that, um, being stuck on the other side of the highway, we had, you know, the one road a thing tells you about sometimes if there's some construction or there's an accident or something happens on that road, shuts it shuts down. down the highway completely. And so I remember being shut down on the other side of the highway and we had a lot of people that were um, not making it through. So they were taking small planes to Seward and I was stuck there for 24 hours basically until the highway opened up. So we just kind of planted a couple of our vehicles at the airport and just help people uh, do it. No charge, no nothing just to get them to the cruise ship because we were stuck there and those people didn't have a ride and they were, yeah. they were a good two miles from the airport and uh, the taxis were just not doing it. It was, it was a really uh, difficult time shut down the highway for like nine or 10 hours and the trains could get through, but they can only run so many trains. So it was all the partnerships working with the, I think it was Princess at the time that they were trying to get their people out. Princess so Cruises, yeah. We were just trying to help them as much as possible. And everybody was so nice. I remember the hotel comp in our rooms because we were helping transport their people too. And everybody was just came together. So again, the partnerships that you get to work with, everybody had great intentions to help the final customer, which yeah. is our customers that come up here and visit Alaska. And the experience that we gave them and everything that they went through and jumped through these hoops and all these people that were helping, they realized that none of us were getting paid for it or anything else that was doing yeah, it. We, we just, just did there it other to enhance their, to make sure their experience. Their experience. So there were so yeah. many compliments that were given to the cruise ship and just how they handled the situation, how vehicles and sprinters were sitting there to wait to pick them up and take them to the port. It was, uh, fortunately they left about six hours late, but, um, yeah. you know, they were able to get out and everybody was able to make it to the cruise ship. So. Well, and I feel like the roadway on Highway 1, we overcome challenges every year with that road, especially during construction. And some people, when they come to visit, they just don't understand that, well, Google says that I can get there in one and a half hours. And it's like, yeah, and that road one is under construction hours. every year. What's They're two, doing something to it. Yeah, it's 140 miles to there. And it's it's one laid for the most place besides some passing roads. So you're right. We only have so much time and it's just not going to Seward. It's going to Kenai. It's going to Homer. It's going to yeah. Fairbanks. It's going to Toke. It's going to Valdez. We only have so much time to work on these roads. So you constantly have road delays. So when you're setting up your, your customers, you're giving them an idea. We're getting uh, reports from DOT and everybody else that, you know, we're going to have pilot cars between these hours. We're going to have this. And during the main times of the season, they try to keep it open where we can get, you know, because we're transporting up to three or 4,000 people that have to get down to the cruise ship and get back from the cruise yeah. ship. So they understand that we have to do those. So a lot of times they're working at night from 10 o'clock at night until seven in the morning. And then you have pilot cars. And then sometimes you're waiting a half an hour in between both sides. So when you have some of those critical transports that people need to get picked up differently, uh, there is some times and we, we try to let our customers know that and give them yeah. the best heads up possible. Well, and I think really setting the expectation has been one of the cornerstones of our business is how can we set the expectation where it is achievable, but then also add that element of surprise that is on top of that. Uh, and so that could be something as simple as, yeah, we're going to pick you up, but then there's water in the car. There's, um, there's instruction guides on what to do within the city. There's a knowledgeable driver who is like, oh, yeah, I've been to the Ulu factory. I've done a tour downtown. Or I'm really familiar with that area. Let's go to the bake shop in Girdwood. Yeah. Like it's uh, it's really this all-encompassing experience that we work to bring our customers, our partners, and the community of BAC that works with us every single day. Well, and our tourism numbers are just, uh, after pre-COVID, they were huge. And then after COVID, it started bringing it back up. But we're up to pre-COVID uh, uh, numbers now, and we're actually exceeding those. So. 
<clears throat> going with everything that's going on in the world right now, um, you know, a lot of people are doing uh, within the United States doing travels. And I think a lot of people's bucket list is always to come to Alaska, but I think that's been elevated now. And I think they're, yeah. they're doing it a little bit sooner than they would later because sometimes going down a country is not such a great idea right now. And um, that's how they feel. So we've been very fortunate to be able to pick up that business and grow our fleet and 120 vehicles in our fleet now. And we're just basically just going out there and trying to do the best job we can and take care of those people. And my hope is that in doing the best job that we can, that other people within the community see that and that sets an example for them being able to um, step out and courage and help somebody that maybe they don't know, but then also being a part of our community yeah. at BAC, like wanting to be trained on how to do some of these tours and to provide this level of customer service. And what is it under, what's the understanding around driver safety and and really uh, customer service in general. These are all qualities that just point back to our core value of raise up, where we take personal responsibility for uh, how people view our region. And it shows up in our work every single day. Well, it's the uniform drivers, it's the buses looking clean, it's the neatness, it's the different, you know, the different aspect for us. It would have been a lot easier to keep our buses white, but we wanted to yeah. stand out differently from everybody else. So we painted them all black and, you know, we wanted to be the black car service for the industry. And, you know, differently than the bus industry is that uh, they're still doing tourism, things like that, but we're more of the black car industry, uh, the black bus industry. We want to make sure that we're bringing a different class to it. Uh, that is different than what some of our other competitors, but in the same way that, if we had to, and we had to get some buses from them that we could rent them out and use some of their buses. They all have nice buses. They're good yeah. vehicles. They're just um, same clientele, but different clientele. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that's been one of our pieces is just how have we been able to differentiate ourselves just a little bit so that it brings this like level of, oh yeah, I can tell the difference between BAC and someone else. It's kind of like the airport, you know, um, we got into the airport business and doing that stuff. And then all of a sudden it just started tumbling into more things because once you're trusted to do one thing, they, they, they think that you can, it's within your lane that you can do something else. And then they just, then all of a sudden the airport's got us wanting to park planes and we're like, well, we don't park planes, you know, but you know, they look for an option because they want to look for a reliable, good person to yeah. option. And, and we've been that person, but, and then we've actually told them, Hey, you know, that's not really in our job focus. We really can't do that, but we appreciate you guys looking yeah. out for us and, and coming to checking us, us, checking, checking us and asking um, yes. as, as the carts inside the airport. You know, that was yeah. one of the things they came to us and asked us, we take over the the luggage carts and do some other things, you know, there's always opportunities that you can do it and you just got to be open to them and you got to be open and you got to do what you do well to be able to get those opportunities yes. to do the next job for them too. And the same with our customers, you know, we're only good as our last job. I mean, it doesn't matter if we have a customer for six years, if we, uh, if we have a major malfunction, it's how we take care of it and how we're going to do it. It's going to be, if we get that next job. So it's not always a guarantee. We want to make sure that they're taken care of. And when something goes wrong, you got to make it right. You know, just in the same thing as you guys go to a restaurant and you order a $75 steak and you want it rare and it comes out like beef jerky. I mean, you're going to send that back and ask for another steak. You know, you want it taken care of the right way. You want to make sure that you're getting what you pay for. You know, and it's not coming from a place of ego. Don't you know who I am? It's like, um, we look at it like, this is a cornerstone to building a strong partnership. And so how could somebody build a partnership with us if we're not addressing and facing and walking through whatever challenges we have together? If we're just pretending that that didn't happen and, oh, we don't need your business, then um, that, that's, not, that's the opposite of our raise-up mindset. And we wouldn't be as successful as we are today if we just um, – operated that way. I'm not going to lie that we've, uh, we've fired some clients before. I mean, that's, but you know, you have to look at it. And when I say that is it, it's just, wasn't a good partnership and we want the partnership on both sides. It has to be reciprocal, uh, just like marriages and other things. It has to be where it is a good relationship both ways. If we are putting all the time and effort into it and they are not, then maybe that's just not our partner in that. And we want a partnership where when, if something does uh, create an issue or a problem that we can go to them immediately. How can we fix this for your client yeah. and things like that? And when they're not negotiable and not easier to work with, or there's not a um, way that we uh, make a deposit to take withdrawals, uh, if we don't get those back from them, then that might not be our best partner. Or that might not be our best person to work with because when it becomes every trip is a, is a, a hassle or an issue or something comes up with it, 
um, that is beyond our control, like, you know, like the road being shut down or something like that. And they're upset because we didn't get them there in a correct time. There's yeah. nothing we can really do with that. So we, we got to have an understanding back and forth and the same we have that for them. So I, I really look at that in the partnership areas. Like, you know, you, we've had some airlines that we've been in cahoots with now for 12, 14 years that yeah. we've had a contract with them. And, and that's the majority of them. Once we get them, we don't, you don't ever lose them. Uh, unless we have service failures or we have some things that are going on, they they don't want to reinvent the wheels. So the same with our clients in tourism. Entre Alaska is a great one to to bring up. I mean, yeah. they have a lot of high end people that come across that want specialty things, and we have to deliver on those. And when we don't, we have to make it right for them. And uh, you know, our partners mean that. I mean, they they throw a lot of business towards our way, so we have to make sure that their clients are there. The specialty menus, the pickups. Yep. The, letting them store their luggage at our place when they leave their hotel because they're not leaving later until that night. I Personal mean, signage. Yeah, like. their own signage and, and their boards. And sometimes even sometimes people wearing their own shirts or their color tie they want, you know, because within their company, everybody wears a green tie. So we try to, we try to uh, accommodate as many as possible. It doesn't mean I'm going to go out and buy 300 ties. We can give everybody in our industry a tie unless they're throwing that much business at us. But we are definitely open to suggestions and how we can make it better. And the experience level is what we're looking for. Really, uh, the innovation piece, too, I think one of the points of success that we've had is that we've maintained this level of curiosity that has kept us open to these opportunities. So it's more like, tell me more about that instead of, oh, no, no, we can't do that. It's it's just tell me more. Yeah, we don't ever try to say no. We just try to look for a way of with it or around it. Uh, how, how can we work with this? Is this something that's uh, doable or is this something just totally outside of our things? And, you know, it, you, uh, I'll tell you another funny experience is like we had a, I don't know, uh, a person from very big wealth in the East, the Middle East, and they were up here and they wanted to go and do safari Oh, yes, you were and, on deck for um, VIP at that time. And yeah. so you are you were being called at all hours of the day and night we for had some this princess from special, Saudi here. <laughs> special, um, special requests clients. and yeah. special clients. And they want special things and they want a person to help them through that. So, you know, sometimes we'll put one of our people in there and I, I happen to be the one on this one, but there was just some I, just a, interesting requests that they asked for. And I was like, well, I, I was, some of them, I was just like, oh, there's no way we could do that. But I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, well, let me what look can into we that. Do? Let me look into that. Let me call the state troopers and see if we're allowed to hunt, you know, and you're from out of country. <laughs> you know, So what can we do? I mean, so when you look at some of those things, you're like, okay, well, maybe there is a yes answer out there and I just don't know it. So I'm not going to tell them no right at the get-go. We're right. going to give them another solution. And I think... That's what we try to come up with is, is not tell them, hey, we can't do this, but here's a solution we can do. So don't give them another problem and say no to it. Find the solution to the problem that might not be the exact one they're looking for, but they can work with it. And, you know, so there's only limitations of what we can do. And yeah, within the can. law. Yeah, yeah. So those are those some, are some interesting things that you get. Well, but always trying to find a, a solution for their problem because, you know what, they're not from here and uh, this person's, know. you know, 8,000 miles away. So they have no idea about what's going on here and they need some Lizanne's. All the way down to we helped them with bodyguards and yeah. security people and things things like that. It, it never never ceases to amaze me. You know, you made an interesting comment about we've fired clients before. Yeah, we've let go of some people. Before. And I think that that is really important to understand from um, for the business owners or the upcoming uh, entrepreneurs that are listening is that every client is not your client. And in that particular case, I remember this one client that we had that was generating a significant amount of annual revenue. And we had a situation that uh, we did everything within our power to make it right. And I mean, Charlie, you were working this yourself. And and uh, you want to just kind of share that story? Well, I mean, I'll give it to a smaller nutshell that there, there were some times that were given that were incorrect on our side. Um, all of our phone calls are recorded. All of things, our emails recorded, everything that's done. And they made it to believe that we had messed up on something. And of course, our first interaction is to make it better. And they're like, what are you going to do to make this better? So we pulled out all the stops, called the Wildlife Conservation Center, got them to go feed some moose and go do some other stuff, all behind the scenes stuff that's expensive and done things. But calling our partners and letting them know what happened and making it happen last minute. And then once we found out that this was this transporting a group for yeah. us for a particular destination management company. Yep. Yeah. And then once we found out this was none of our fault and none of this stuff was there, we were just trying to recruit what they asked us to do on top of that. And they felt that we should have presented that in the very beginning and they would have never got above and beyond and done that. And, but they wanted us to, 
because they felt that it was on our side a mistake. So anyways, the long story short, it's like we just went to them and said, hey, you know, these are the costs that incurred. Here's the extra hours we gave. Here's the extra time. And and uh, it came on deaf ears. And we just said, you know, is that the partnership we're looking for is to get cast eyes? Then we make it right. And then, you know, down that later that day, this was the same day that we went through the recordings and listened to them and the yeah. emails and found it. And we presented it to them. And it was not a... Uh, we should have done that before we did what we did, but they were on the phone upset because their clients were upset and we didn't make them look bad. By the last thing we did yeah, is we said, did Hey, your client them. screwed Absolutely. up or anything else like this. We just, we took it upon ourselves. We, we were a representation of them and we wanted to make sure that we took care of them as best as possible. They were super happy, gave us great reviews and all this other stuff after the, after everything was said and done, but the partner didn't want to take care of any of that stuff. So I just said, you know what? That's probably not our partner. That's not a person that we want to do business with because when something does happen or something goes wrong, where does that leave us? Are yeah, they just saying going bad things about us, us or are they trying to fix the problem with us? Or are we trying to make uh, sure that the in client was there? Because every person that comes to Alaska tells another person about Alaska. And if they tell about good experiences, they might take four or five, but they have a bad experience. They're going to yeah. tell a lot more people. And we want to keep a positive outlook for our state. You know, I mean, this is a huge part of our income that comes in during the summertime and massive for so many different uh, companies that just operate during the summertime. They just come here from the May to September and then they leave for six or seven months and they come back and do it again. So we want to make sure those people are uh, taken care of uh, with our airport. If we've yeah. talked on our previous airports, we're sometimes the first person they see coming off the airplane because we have our airport ambassadors in wheelchairs picking people up. So, and then when the last people they see too is our airport ambassadors taken to the airplane. So we have that great time to be able to make that first great impression all the way to the last impression they had and where their stay was in Alaska. So that's important. You know, and with that particular group on that particular day, we were slammed. Like there was no time to like look, look, listen to recording after recording. Like our focus was customer service that day and just making sure that our schedule was executed. And um, so in, in essence, it wasn't really reasonable to expect that we'd drop everything to pour over phone recordings to find out whose fault it is. We just wanted to make sure that we trusted that we were going to do our part and, and everybody was going to be happy. And then at the end of the day, we would hash it out. And that's really what we expect from, from our partners is it's like, Hey, we, we're not here to blame everybody. We want to make it, it right for the customer. Let's take care of them first. And then we will absolutely like address any growth opportunities that we have. And, uh, in this case, it was not only was there a situation where at the end they didn't take any accountability or responsibility they made the problem worse because it was almost like they were taunting. They were calling and going, and what else are you going to do? And what else are you going to do? And it was just like, oh my gosh. So, of course, you could see why we didn't want to be partners anymore with that. And we just, we, we ended that relationship then and there. We just told them that, hey, we're probably not the company you wanna, we, we want to work with anymore. And we felt that way. And yeah, I think they were even more offended of that. But, uh, you know, it was just one of those things that we just, a lot of energy and a lot of stuff went through it uh, and a lot of, a lot of uh, fixing things on our part. And then it wasn't really for us to be fixed, but I'm glad we did it for the customers because yes. in the in experience, that was the most important thing for them. Unfortunately, our customer that we work for, which is their customer, um, it, 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 they didn't see the light of any of that happening. Besides, they thought we were late for something that we weren't for. So anyways, we try to make it best as possible. Well, and the, the piece of that too, is that we just didn't cut off that customer cold turkey, we said, we are happy to honor all of the, the reservations that you have for the rest of the summer. However, we just won't be accepting any new ones. And so it wasn't this like cut you off and oh, no. you're out. It was like, we will do, we will honor what you've already booked. However, we realize that after this situation that, that this isn't going to be a sustainable um, business r arrangement. For it us. wasn't just one thing. There was other small things that happened before that, but there was nothing that caused the red flag. This one was a really big red flag. And, you know, and it's just, again, you know, if you have to keep coming back to the same contract, same, the more times we have to touch it, the less money that we make on it, the less time that our staff has to help the other customers on it. And when we have to touch something 12, 14, 15 times, um, it, it starts to become a, uh, it just had a repeat of problems that we had with it. Yeah. So, Anyways, no hard feelings, you know? Yeah, no, no hard feelings. But I think that this is also another thing that when you are in a situation where you are seeing a repeating pattern, 
then listen, like, look at that. Don't pretend that it's not happening because you just think you need to have that thing. Like it's, it's really not true. And if you choose, if you choose to face it, then um, the reward is going to be there. I promise you. That's something that you and I have taught ourselves over and over again when we've held on to somebody that that just stayed at the company too long, or sure. or we um, we held on to a client too long, or we held on to uh, a po- a process that just wasn't working. A vehicle, <laughs> or a vehicle. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've we've it, uh, growing pains between all of us, you know. In twenty four years into this now, we've yeah. kind of figured out some of our niches, but we don't know it all by any means. I mean, I, we're always learning things day by day and week by week, and new technology comes out all the time, and we're always trying to better and improve it and give a better customer service at the end of all that too. So. And you know, I think really this idea of partnerships and assessing who can you have alliances with, not just in your community where you're where you, are, you live and work, but also within organizations. City, Some of, state, federal. Yes. I mean, the different organizations, nonprofits. I mean, there's so many people that you can partner with. And, you know, some of those you have to kind of pick and choose which ones you want to do because they'll all want to partner with you and, and especially nonprofits and things like that because their objective and goal is to raise money and do things and, yeah. and to ask for donations and things like that. And they're all great, but it has to be done in moderation. It has to be something that you're deeply... Um, that's what I'm looking for, deeply involved with or something that you have a passion for, yeah. or it has to be something that is just makes so much sense to do it because it's the right thing to do. But uh, yep. thousands upon thousands of nonprofits. And, you know, I, I remember at the very beginning, we, I mean, we were giving up by $120,000, $130,000 a year a worth lot. of gift certificates and all these things that you're giving out to it to, to be part of the public and things like that. And we just had to rail it in a little bit and say, hey, we have to make sure that we're looking for these people that have these goals and these objectives we're looking for. And we, they align with what our moral values and what's going on. And we're going to support these ones. And if they get some one-offs that come across, we're going to do it. But there's a procedure now to ask for donations and things like that. And yeah. we want to give out to organizations because we've been blessed to be with what we have because of our organization and the community around us. You know, and really... Um in this season, my heart has been to really focus on the ministries that affect the children, the children in our community. And I think that that's something that um, if you don't have something that you're a part of that brings you outside of your work area and um, that you need to get that because there is this higher purpose that everyone is called to be other than just collecting a paycheck and going through the motions. And um, understanding that BAC and AMT through not just um, the certificates that are offered at these auctions, but also like I personally volunteer for a local organization that touches the lives of teen parents and their babies every week. And uh, I do that with uh, our daughter. And that's something that is absolutely meaningful right in my own town. So um, there are just so many things that we could be doing as um, community members, not just partnering, not just, it's, it's like setting this higher example of really what does it look like to be a part of a community and, and to be a good friend and to um, be a good steward. And when you're following along those pathways, like Charlie, there's been so many young men in particular who have just, you have inspired with all of the different ways that you have given over time. And I know that BAC has allowed for you to have kind of like a platform, but you use that platform to um, help them and lift them. And um, I mean, I remember we were looking to buy a couch. Do you remember that? And that young man who had our last name? <laughs> He was like, I so wish I'm related my, to you. My <laughs> wife's like, hey, I found a couch for the lake house. It's used. I'm like, are we buying a used couch? What are we doing? She goes, that looks brand it new. It was I'm supposed like, to be brand new. We don't go to somebody else's house and buy a couch. You know, and I'm not we to say we're not above do. it by being there, but we, you know, we usually go to a store and purchase it. And so we went there and the gentleman had the same last name as us. And I said, I said, wow. I said, he goes, yeah. He goes, I always get people ask me all the time, are you related to Charlie Grimm or the Grimm's family? He goes, no, I wish. And I was like, wow. Well, why would you wish that? But, you know, I mean, he doesn't know compliment. what he doesn't know. Yeah, it's a compliment. So it was it's something that we try to give back. And there's so many people I can tell you that I growing up in Cordova, the Glacens, the Hardings, the 
uh, there's so many people that looked past where I was at when I was young growing up and, and really um, took me under their wing and showed me things and how I can do things and, you know, how you can be. And so there's, you have to look at that as a gift uh, from those people because they saw something in us a long time, saw something in me a long time ago mm-hmm. when I was 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. So <clears throat> I look at other people too and try to say, hey, what, what can we help this person with? Because a lot of people don't have a lot of mentors or people that can help them. And um, we seem to be uh, the problem solver. Sometimes I feel like we have a big uh, episode of Cheers at our at our place because um, we are sometimes the people that they lean on to our employees or ask them or family problems or medical problems or marital problems or whatever it might be. We get the download on all that stuff and then we try to give them the best advice we can or help them or to steer them in the right directions. And, you know, we don't have all the answers, but no. of course being older than a lot of our uh employees that we have some worldly knowledge and they, they, they look at that as, as gospel almost sometimes that they just really think that we have a great answers and we just try to give them the best answer possible. So again, when you're partnering and we're not just partnering with our team member, I mean, with our uh, partners, we partner with our team too. And we get involved in what's going on with them when they're sick, they're injured, they have a uh, baby. We just had an employee had a baby the other day and our daughter helped with the EMT team and we got a, uh, a diaper yeah, cake yeah. made up for them. So, um, and then we had that delivered by our medics uh, out to the base out for her. So we wanted to let her know that she felt important and that we wanted to give something to them. And we have done food runs for employees. We have given time off. We've yeah. helped them with plane tickets. We've helped them in all different ways that we can because emergencies happen and sometimes they're not in the, um, in the position to be able to uh, take the time off or the financials or just other things happening with their family members that we want to help. So uh, we feel that we're called and we're blessed that we have uh, uh, resources that can help them. Yeah. And, you know, um, one of the employees was like, I, I think of you guys as like my aunt and uncle. And I'm like, dude, I'm pretty sure we're the same age. <laughs> like wow. I was like, Charlie, what's up with that? And he's like, yeah, well, it's um, we just we care. We, we care. Help. And that's the family atmosphere of a company, too, is, you know, um, a lot of these companies are big and, you know, we're, we're a medium sized company. We're a medium to large size company. And so um, our employees come to us with all sorts of issues or problems sometimes. And we want to help them out with them as best as possible because we care about them. We, this is our work family. Yeah. And, and we see these people sometimes we do more than our own family, you know, so. sometimes, and we allow our own family to, to be in this community. Like our, our kids work at the company. Yep. So they're, they're in proximity and, and, for the individuals that are working at BAC, it's like, I'm really proud to work with them. I I don't have any team members that I can put my finger at that go, you know what, they're probably not a good fit for the raise up value. And I, I just, I, I wouldn't ask for people to work with others that I wouldn't want to work with. And I'm just, I'm really grateful for the HR team and their ability to just navigate through that and keep the pipeline going. And, and really these days, HR gets all of the special requests and then they get ran up to us in most cases. But occasionally, Charlie and I will just see somebody who needs something and we'll just make sure they get it. Yeah. So well, thank I, you guys. I hope that this has been a blessing to you guys and that you've gotten some solid nuggets from understanding some of the, the interesting things that we've encountered, especially with partnerships and in our tourism season and really getting another like clear picture of what it's like to be working within the proximity of, of people like us. So have a great day and listen for next week. Bye.